Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. So today is just going to be a quick garden walkthrough. I just want to show you what's beautiful in the garden right now. So one of the most beautiful thing in the garden right now, I think it's this quick fire stand that I have here. It has been blooming for me for the last, uh, almost, I would say, um, almost about three to four weeks now. The season started early for us. So these quick fire blooms, I think, have been blooming earlier than most years. And I'm actually going to pop up a few images um, that I took of the quick fire blooms uh, since it started blooming for us uh, almost four weeks ago. So on this side, you can see there's just so much more pink around some of these florets here. That's just indicating that our summer is coming along quite nicely. And if you plant this in a more shady area, you might see that it uh, might not color as nicely or as early as one that is planted in full sun. And this one is planted in full sun. And just in case you're wondering, this is south facing, so it does get sun all day long until late or early evening. And what else is also beautiful about the garden around this time is the um, banana cream daisy. And for those of that don't know, this is the original banana cream daisies when it first came out. So I find that it's beautiful, it's gorgeous, but it doesn't do um, as well in terms of reblooming. So it has been blooming for me for a few weeks now. So when it does bloom, it comes out with that buttery yellow, as you can see in some of the blooms right here. These are more of the fresh blooms. They do have that more characteristic yellow, but eventually that yellow does fade into a creamy white, and then eventually it becomes more of a white color daisy than the banana cream uh, color that you see in the earlier blooms. And if I have photos, I'll pop them up for you so you can see how they were looking earlier when they just started blooming. And another thing I like about these daisies is that when they come into bloom right after the salvia and just before the bulbs start blooming as well. So I think it's really beautiful in between plants. Um, if you're looking for something that blooms just before the hydrangea and right after the salvias. Now, every year I look at these and I think how beautiful they are and I always think about um, trying to replant them with the newer varieties to see if they rebloom better than this one. But then um, I thought about ripping these out and killing beautiful plants like this and uh, I haven't had the you know heart to do that yet but uh, in the future who knows. But uh, uh, in the meantime, I'm enjoying these and sometimes I feel like if these do, you know, don't rebloom, I think that's okay as well because once the bulbs start blooming, I think they start to take over anyway, so I may not need these to rebloom for me. And I also love the beautiful, you know, Shoshu's green of the Anna's Magic Ball against the blooms of the banana cream daisies. I think that's really pretty. And one of the things that I think I'm a little disappointed about this year is that the alyssum, it's not blooming as profusely as they usually do every other year. And I think this year the alyssum blooms are not doing as well because they're actually being eaten by snails, which I think I have uh, sort of an infestation throughout the front garden. And right behind the um, daisies, you can see that the bulbs are starting to bloom and they have that sort of a, a greenish uh, color blooms right now. And here, if you look closely, you'll see that there is a new plant that I have planted right there. And that is actually one of the uh, pentacle hydrangeas that I grew from seeds from two years ago. And if you look really close, you'll see that there are actually little flower buds on them. So I think they are actually blooming a lot earlier than they were last year, which is amazing. So I cannot wait to show you how this will look like because I think, like I said, when it started to bloom last year, it bloomed so late in the season that I didn't get to actually see the actual, you know, blooms and how the color changes. But uh, I think they're gonna be blooming a lot earlier this year. So cannot wait. And this is really a beautiful view here as well. Love it. And from this view, I don't know if you can see, but my boom meringue lilac is actually re-blooming here. So, really pretty. 
So what I did earlier in the spring is that as soon as the blooms were done, I actually pruned away all the broken stems that I had. Um, and, and since then, it started to push out new stems. And at the end of the stems, you can see there's new blooms on them. Right now, I think they look really pretty because they provide the garden a bit of movement. And I love to look at these wispy looking branches and the blooms as they, you know, move back and forth on our windy day like today. Really pretty. And the pow wow um, daisies are also in bloom as well. And right behind this uh, sedum, the autumn, autumn joy sedum, you can see that my little lime punch blooms are about to open very soon. So if you look closely, you'll see that the blooms on these little lime punch are actually in that lime green color state, which I really love as well. I think that's really pretty. And eventually they will open up and turn fully white. And this view, you can see the combination of the fescue grass and the sedum. I think that looks really pretty. And from this view, you can see the beautiful lobelia in those pots. I love that blue purple color, so pretty. And the bobo tree that I have in here are just a little bit behind the rest of the plants in the garden. And the reason why is because earlier on in the season, I actually had it kept on the porch where it wasn't getting enough sun. So since I moved it down here, I think it's doing a lot better and it's getting more sun. Therefore, you can see that there are tons of blooms forming on the ends of each of the stems. And right in here, you'll see that I have another hydrangea that I grew from seed. Um, it looks like it's being eaten by something, which I don't know, but that's okay. As long as the plant survives, I'm okay with it. So hopefully that will be uh, okay. I also have another one that I grew from seed as well. Now this one, um, you can kind of see that it looks quite unique. Um, it's got green stems. I don't know, sorry, you can the I've got some chives planted in this same planter. So this one has a greenish sort of a stem. You can kind of see that, right? And then the leaf, so the, the part where the leaf comes out, it's a reddish kind of a color. So I think that's very unique. Can't wait to see what the blooms will look like, but that to me looks really pretty. And I don't think I've seen a hydrangea that has sort of that uh, coloration before. Unlike the one that I just showed you, this one is all green, so that looks really cool as well. So, very interesting. And unlike the other two, this one actually has a sort of a more colorful reddish stem throughout the entire plant, so really interesting. And this one also has the same coloration as well. This one, although, seems to look like it's going to be a bigger plant because the foliage seems really big compared to the other ones that I have. And for those of you that are wondering about the little seedlings of the hydrangea seeds that I planted, they're all actually here in this container. And you can kind of see that if I wanted to, I could take these and separate them into little containers and plant them all. But I don't have enough space to plant these. But it'll be interesting if you had space, you can plant all of this. That would be so cool. So this container on this side actually has that vanilla strawberry. It's in its second year. I don't know if you remember how small it was last year, but um, it is uh, coming along quite nicely. I love the shape right now. In terms of blooming, there are tons of uh, buds at the end of the stems, but I think they're a little behind the other one that you're gonna see on the other side of the garden. And at the base of this hydrangea standard, you can see I have many calabracoa plants that I grew from seed. I also have many mini snapdragons, um, as well as I have one uh, zinnia and a few more of the hydrangea seedlings. And right behind here, you can see that's one of the three little limes that I divided back a few years ago. So this little lime, I don't know if you remember, started out as a uh, tree form, which I divided a few years ago, um, but that stem actually was eaten down by something, so it died. So I had to cut that back, and so now the plant is growing in a bush form. And I'm actually waiting to see if I can find a long stem this fall or possibly next spring and start training into a tree form soon.
And you can see that the little lime is actually um, blooming earlier this year than usual. Um, you can kind of see that uh, this plant is quite young and because it's quite young, young meaning that all these stems are actually new stems that grew from the ground up. So because that's the case, I didn't prune it back very much this year. And because I didn't prune it back very much this year, you can kind of see there are tons more branches and the blooms therefore are a lot smaller than they would be. And that's sort of how you control the floppiness of this plant because I know some people were saying that some of the branches do get a little bit more floppy. So I recommend that for a young plant, not to prune it so much, do as little pruning as possible. And once the plant matures and you get more woody stems, that's when you start to prune it into the shape that you want and therefore you're able to control the um, amount of floppiness or I guess to reduce the floppiness in them once these branches have hardened up and uh, become more woody. And here you're looking at the two spiral boxwood. They are looking somewhat woolly um, and the reason why is because we actually didn't get to shape them in the spring because we were so busy dealing with the you know the caterpillars but um, we're waiting for a week um, of you know cooler weather I think that's when we'll go in and prune them and talking about pruning we also didn't get a chance to prune the uh, dwarf bird or spruce as well but it's looking pretty um, the calabracas they're the same varieties that I planted from seed uh, and so I'm actually quite happy with those but the uh, dichondra fall silver falls now this um, does not look silver to me so I have no clue I was told that it wasn't getting enough sun that's why it's not silver in color but now I'm looking this is planted in full sun and I'm not getting any silver blue color on these although the back does look really pretty the back side has that velvety silver and blue color so I think that's really pretty but I was hoping to have that sort of blue silver color on the uh, heart shaped foliage as well but it doesn't seem like it's gonna happen so I don't know what happened there but the, the uh, like I said the uh, color brackets is looking pretty and same thing on this one no silver color on the foliage of the the contra silver falls so not sure what's going on but talking about color of foliage I do love the one that I had uh, with the creeping Jenny I think that sort of lime green yellow is really really pretty and that I put it up here so this combo of uh, containers that I have here on the porch, I think that looks really pretty. So this one, the Calabracas, I actually have some pinks. I have some purple in here, which I think that's really pretty. It's not getting enough sun, so it's not blooming as well as the other, but I think that looks really pretty. And I don't know if you know this, but these uh, two containers contain a herb plant, which is edible, called Perilla. It's actually so pretty as well. I love the color as well as the shape of the foliage. I think that just looks really pretty. And I put it here so it's convenient for me to come out and harvest them as well. And here is actually one of my favorite places to sit under uh, the cover porch next to the front of the house. And I like to sit here on days when it's rainy and I can't sit in the garden. So really pretty. And this lovely container of begonias, um, I have had this for, I think this is its third year, um, and I've been winterizing it in the um, house next to a bright window all winter long, and uh, in the spring I take it out and uh, leave it here throughout the entire summer. So I think that looks really pretty, and you can kind of see the lovely color that's quite similar to the paint color of the door, that, that looks really pretty. And right next to the chair on the other side, you see this is the mountain hydrangea called Tiny Tough Stuff. I love this plant. It's been gorgeous for me and blooming nonstop since late spring, early summer. So it's been really, really pretty. And I actually love these star shape, um, you know, flowers here. So pretty. And then this is that double sort of florets infertile part of the blooms. I think that looks really pretty. And because it's a lace cap style, it actually um, attracts pollinators as well. So extra bonus. 
and I don't know if you remember me saying this, but I think this plant is very hardy. Um, it's planted in this pot and it doesn't get winter protection at all, and yet it survives and blooms in old wood for me. So I think that's really extra special. And I'm actually also really happy with this little island uh, garden here. I think that looks really pretty. And here I have a group of three boba hydrangeas. Now this one was actually a recent plant that I planted two years ago and the other two are I think in their fourth year. And talking about plants that are early blooming, all the plants on this part of the garden are always blooming earlier than the other side. And here's the second vanilla strawberry tree that I have in this container. And I also have a quick fire fab as well as a firelight hydrangea in that pot. I think the firelight uh, in the container here uh, bloomed earlier than the other two that I have in the back garden. Um, I think it blooms almost around the same time as the quick fire actually. So really interesting. And I too also love this firelight. I think um, they are sort of a semi uh, lace calf, uh, kind of a panicle for me. They have larger um, non-fertile florets as well as some, not too many, but some fertile blooms on there, which makes it uh, attractive to many pollinators like bees and butterflies. Here's a mini quick fire fab. Um, it was a branch that rooted and uh, I took it out early in the spring and plant it in this container and it's blooming beautifully right now. And you can always tell that it is a quick fire fab because of that characteristic X shape of the florets here. I think that's really, really unique. And it's, uh, you know, got underplanted with some more of the calabracas that I grew from the seed. So, and also a little zinnia there as well. And here under the um, vanilla strawberry, I also have a mix of plants that I also grew from seed, except for the lobelia, which I bought. Um, I've got the alyssum here that's blooming beautifully. So you can see that the alyssum in the container is all blooming really well, nicely, except the ones in the ground. And that's because the snails get to the blooms before they get a chance to bloom. So anyway, I think that's really pretty. Uh, I love this combination of blue and white. I think that's really pretty. Plus the uh, Calabraca was as well. So this one is like a, a bright pink, which I think it's really pretty. And then there's some more color blooms that I have here, which is a lighter blue lavender. And more of these mini snapdragons in the form of a bright, happy yellow color, which I really love. And this firelight is also plant underplanted with some of the same varieties of uh, plants that I grew from seed as well. So really pretty. And here in this firelight, you can kind of see that I purposely, um, you know, didn't prune it back very much so that the flowers or the panicles can be smaller. But I think that looks really pretty as well. So last year, the quick fire fav here was actually the earliest blooming panicle hydrangea for me, but this year it's not the case. Um, it is early, but uh, compared to the original quick fire, I think this one is about a week or so behind. And unlike the other one that I showed you in the pot, this one does have some bloom that has been um, sort of white, but there are many of them are still in that greenish color state. So, but I think that in a week or two, this will be all white, which will be really pretty. And just in case you're wondering, this quick fire fab is actually in its second full year in the same space. And I don't know if you noticed, but I do have one stem here that's going to be a very good candidate for me to turn this into a tree. So I'm hoping that it will uh, be long enough for me to actually start doing that this fall. So here from this angle, you can see I have a planter here with two pieces of the incredible hydrangea that I divided a couple years ago. Um, this is in its second year, yes. And I also have two more stems that I also divided there in that planter, also in its second year. So here's a better view of this planter. So you might think something is off with this one. Well, yes, you're correct. So this piece was actually turned upside down uh, by a squirrel. It dug it up and I found it turned 
root side up. So I quickly replanted it back uh, early in the year and it's actually growing and it's actually blooming. And I actually think that now I come to think or to see this, I actually think that the incredible hydrangea here might be a bit too big for this planter. So in the space, I'm thinking of dividing my Invincible Wee White and possibly planting them here instead. I think the Invincible um, Wee White grows to about two feet. I think that will be just perfect for the, um, you know, for the window here, because I don't want it too big where it actually shades the window. So I think that will be actually perfect. But in the meantime, I'm enjoying this little uh, guy here. I think that looks really pretty. It's actually pushing out new blooms on here as well. Very pretty. But aside from that, I think these Incredibles are just beautiful. Look at this massive size of the uh, flower head. I think that's really impressive. So here's the limelight um, that I uh, turned. I think this is its third year as a tree and I try to you know remove all the stems below um, I also removed all the extra stems below and I only kept three of the um, you know branches to make this canopy so um, I think it's not meant to be grown into a small pot like that so I may have to move it into a larger pot and possibly uh, replace the soil in there next year but anyway, regardless, it's actually blooming well, even though it actually sits here in the space where it gets mostly shade all day long. So I'm actually quite surprised that uh, given all the shade that it gets, it's still um, performing beautifully. And this is one of the most beautiful views um, from the part of the garden right now. I love this sort of um, calming effect of these incredible hydrangea. Uh, blooms. I think that's just really, really pretty. And just in case you're wondering, um, I don't have any stakes or anything in here, and they're actually doing pretty well in this container. It's the same container that I have on the other side, and uh, I think that's really, really pretty. Now, it does look a little bit more floppy under the heavy rain, but I think regardless, it's still looking pretty good. And here you're looking at my Limelight Prime in container. Um, this one, it's in its um, first full year in container because I got I bought it last year and planted it in this container, but I think so far it's doing beautiful. Um, and uh, so far, no problem at all. It looks like the size is still good for this container, so I don't have to move it out of container anytime soon yet. In terms of the um, the new Limelight Prime, I love the color of the stems. It's got a much deeper red color um, on the stems than the original Limelight. But in terms of uh, blooming, I think the blooms are a little bit later than the original Limelight. I'm not sure if it's because it's in container or not. But um, it seems like the limelight that I have is a little bit ahead of the panicles that you see here on this limelight prime. So it could be because it's a fairly young plant or it could be that because it gets mostly shade all day long, that's why it's forming blooms a lot later. But in terms of the plant itself, I think it's a gorgeous plant. Love it. Here's the last few blooms on the William Morris Rose. Um, the blooms yesterday actually were covered with Japanese beetles. I actually found a few of them in here and removed the um, blooms. So we had a few more yesterday and I think there might be one in there right now. Oh no, that's not it. But they're actually coming to the end of the first flush. So that's going to be, um, I need to deadhead these. There are a few more buds that are going to form. So there might be still a few more flowers. And here's the original Endless Summer Macrophylla Hydrangea. And these are all blooms on old wood. And they've been blooming since the end of June for me. So really just a beautiful plant. Behind it, that one there, that one is the um, Twist and Shout. It's a lace cap Macrophylla Hydrangea. Um, for some reason, I'm not getting any blooms on old wood. So 
I think it's time that I need to let it go or give it away to my brother and plant something else there that could be more useful for that space because I'm really limited in space and I don't want to be planting them something that will not perform well for me. So here you're looking at the firelight tidbit. I don't know if you remember, but uh, this is in its second year, my garden. Um, it's about a foot, just over a foot, foot and a half wide and almost two feet tall. I know you can't see it because this happy return stay lily is taking all that space and it's hard for you to see from below. But in terms of size, that's sort of how it looks. And I don't know if you remember, but last year it bloomed for me so late um, that by the time um, I got to see it, it was like uh, fall. But this year, it's um, almost the middle of July and you can kind of see that the blooms are already forming. This, So I'm quite excited about this. And here you're looking at a quick fire fab. Um, it was a rooted stem that I had at the front that was transplanted here in the spring. And it was a tiny single stem and it grew so much. And all I did was give it a couple inches of compost on top. Other than that, I haven't been feeding the, um, you know, the, the colobracoas that I planted below. And because of the compost, I think, it grew much bigger and you can see this, the massive size of the foliage here but uh, yeah it's a lot bigger than the one at the front so I'm not sure what happened but I think it has to do with the amount of compost that I give it and because of that you can kind of see that instead of putting out new blooms early it's actually just about to open so this one's kind of a greenish color and then I have tons more um, panicles that are forming on many of these stems here so looks like it's blooming a little bit later but that I don't mind at all because look at the size of the plant now I can't believe that one stem grew this much and because I haven't been feeding the calabracoas uh, with uh, you know fertilizer it hasn't growing been growing all that well for me but uh, now that I know that this is doing well or this hydrangea is doing well i can now start feeding it with more of the you know soluble fertilizer and hopefully the calabracos will start to uh, grow and spill over the side of the container but anyway i think that looks really pretty so all of the bobos here you can kind of see on this side they're still kind of a greenish uh, color um, these ones here on this side they do get more sun so they look like they're a little ahead of the uh, bubbles on the side and here's a combination of my bloom struck you can see there's a few blooms that are forming on this bloom struck um, so there's like one two three I might get another one there and I also have one there. So there's about four or five blooms, possibly six, um, that are forming on this bloom struck. But aside than that, the incredible on the back, I think that looks really pretty as well. And here's the limelight tree. This limelight tree, it's in its year six, I believe, in tree form. And it's massive. And it looks like it's just over seven feet tall and about six feet wide but uh, it also looks like it's ahead of the one that's in container as well so can't wait to see it bloom soon and this is that invincible wee white that i had that's been blooming for a while now so it's gone through that pink state and now it's uh white and i think from now on it's gonna start to turn that sort of uh, greenish creamy yellow so that's gonna look really pretty but what you're looking at here, this is the Firelight Hydrangea. So this one, it's in its uh, year number, oh dear, number four or number five. But it's massive now. It's about f almost five feet tall of between, I would say, just uh, about four, just over four feet tall and um, about four or five feet wide. It's gorgeous. It does have a little chlorosis, but I think regardless, um, it's still looking pretty good. And this one here, you can kind of see that the panicles are a little bit bigger than the ones in container at the front garden, but uh, it does also look like it's a little bit behind the one at the front as well. The bloom still has more of a green, chashu's green to it, but I think this color is really pretty too. 
And this, I would say, has to be one of my favorite medium size um, pentacle hydrangeas. I love the fact that it stays pretty compact. So if you're looking for something that stays within five feet tall and wide, this is the perfect candidate. And the other thing that's beautiful about this one is that it's got panicles that are sort of semi-lacy and semi-full. So um, it does attract pollinators and butterflies and bees. So that's really good. I think I love anything that's lacy. So this is some something of in-between, which I think looks very elegant. And here is my Lava Lamp Flare Hydrangea. And it's also massive in size. I think, you know, it's even taller than the firelight and um, I kept on saying that the tag um, says it was supposed to be within two to three feet and that's why I planted it at the front but it started to grow so big and now I have no more space to grow because I didn't you know plan for something that's so big like this so otherwise I would have planted it way in the back of the garden so if you're planting one of these lava lamp flare I expect it to be this size because I think it looks like you know without the blooms it's about five feet so I can imagine once the panicles fill in and they start blooming it could be as tall as six feet so anyway I have to think about what to do with it because I think it's just really um, not meant to be at the front of the garden like that, right? So, but regardless, I think it looks pretty. It also just started blooming as well. So you can see all the beautiful, you know, florets. This one is quite similar to a um, semi lacy uh, pentacle hydrangea called the um, Pinky Winky. So I think that's really quite similar to that one. And the other beautiful thing about this plant is that it does have a very bright reddish stem color. So if you're looking for color texture of the plant, and though the reddish color stem does look, the plant look really beautiful, even when it was not in blooming. So I think that's really a pretty good characteristic trait of this pentacle hydrangea. And against the wall, you can see all my serrano tree lilies that are starting to open up very soon. And this fall, I'm actually going to be dividing many of these because I think that's just a bit too much in the back there. I only want, you know, a few to line the back against the fence, but it's just starting to be so crowded. And here's a beautiful view of the spot in the garden. I have the two blue jangos that are doing beautifully this year. There's tons of blooms on old wood, which I'm really happy about. Um, there's my bobo tree. Do you remember how small that tree was three years ago? It has grown so much. Look at the size of the canopy now. I'm really impressed with that. I think that looks really pretty. There is the firelight here that I have. This one is in its, I think, fourth year. Um, and if you go back and watch some of my earlier videos, you can see that it was much smaller then, but now it's gotten to about, I think, four feet tall and about three feet wide. Um, I have two more bobos here that are looking very pretty. This uh, spot, I think they are really happy about because these always seem to be blooming first in the garden. So here's one of the blue jangles uh, that I have. Look at the massive number of uh, blooms that I have on old wood. That is very impressive. And again, I don't winter protect them. So I know it's a hit and miss, right? It all kind of depends on how the winter goes because the last winter we had, I think was pretty mild aside from the few, you know, winter ice storms that we had in terms of temperature wise, it's not as bad as the previous year. So that's why it's doing so much better than the year before, but loving, loving it so much this year. Here. And I love the gradual changes into the, uh, the color of the um, blooms on the blue jangle. So pretty. Those of you that know me, I love anything blue, anything purple. So this is like a lavender, kind of a pink color tone, which I think it's really pretty. And here is the last lonely Eglington David Austin rose that I have left. It's so pretty and uh, I don't have too many left except for this one. So I thought to leave it on as long as I'm able to. But uh, anyway, it's so pretty, I love it. And here's my beautiful Pilu Clematis. This has to be one of my most absolute favorite in the garden. It is very prolific. It's covered with blooms all the way from bottom to the top of the trellis. 
Listen, now, uh, there's just so much noise going on. There's people doing construction um, near the house. There's also a helicopter over top. So anyway, I hope you can still hear me. Um, but uh, I think um, some of you have said that the blooms of the pilu are small. I think they're not all that small. The majority of the blooms, I would say, are about two and a half to three inches wide. Uh, some are two inches, some are four inches. But um, what I love about this is that they are just so profusely covered. Even though the blooms are small, but you have so many of them covered the entire trellis that makes them really impressive looking, I think. And that's what uh, I think uh, makes them really, really beautiful. And here's the other limelight on the um, west side of the garden. I think in terms of blooming, it's just slightly behind the other one. And it's only because I did prune it back a little later than the other limelight on the east side. And underneath this um, limelight, you can see I have a couple of the Vision in Pink uh, still be that's uh, blooming. And the color is not showing up as well because it gets so much shade during the day. And here behind the bobo here, you can see that that's my little quick fire. Um, it's just started blooming for me about a week ago. Um, compared to the quick fire at the front, this is very behind, but only because it gets mostly shade during the day. So it doesn't get enough sun, I think, for it to grow all that well. But I'm really happy to see it blooming a lot earlier than it did last year. And also it grew a little bit bigger than before as well. So really love it. And the limelight, you remember the limelight that I planted in the back there? Um, it's actually doing very well. There are also blooms already set um, on, on the plant. And there's also one stem that I really like that's getting really tall. So I wanna turn that into a tree as well. So really, really pretty. And just like the um, other bobos on the other side of the garden, these do bloom a little bit later um, compared to the bobos that I have here that get more full sun. But regardless, I like that gradual, you know, blooming period between the two parts of the garden. So that's what makes it beautiful. Oh, and just in case you're wondering, these are the three, um, you know, emeralds that I had um, planted from wax, remember? Yeah, so I took them out here in the summer just to let them soak in some sun. And then as soon as fall hits, I take them in, cut everything off and put them in a dark uh, space in the basement for them to rebloom. And here's another beautiful spot in the garden. I really love this part of the garden this year. Um, I love this bobo container. Do you remember how small that was last year? Really pretty. And then that bobo tree, that's so pretty. And that uh, jantar cedar that I pruned back to make it look like a tree underplanted with many of the seedlings that I grew from seed. So this one here has the alyssum. Actually, the list of my, this one I bought actually, but I do have many color bracoas. There's a purple variety, the hot pink, and then one lobelia. Now, this lobelia was actually dug up by squirrels last week, so I pre planted it and give it a lot of water, so I think it's doing okay. But um, this gender cedar here, Look, look at all the mini snapdragons that I planted. Look how massive they're getting. So as it turned out, all of them, except well, the ones that already bloomed, they're all yellow. So I'm not sure how that happened, but I got lucky, I think. It worked out with the blue lobelia that I have it uh, planted together there. It's really pretty. Here's another panicle hydrangea that I grew from seeds surrounded by some green onions and some basil uh, plants here, but uh, it, um, it grew quite a bit. It was a tiny little thing when I planted it a few weeks ago, but it's grown so much since then. So anyhow, I think I'm gonna stop the video here. I wanna say thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care everyone. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye for now.